Hello everyone, my name is Eric and this is the Etiquette Sunday live stream for all the teachers out there and um, English learners that also sometimes join and I'm, uh, it's, I'm, I've got this big smile on my face because even before I started the stream, Bonnie Esther, you were there, hi, I, 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 I haven't even started the stream and suddenly your uh, message popped up. Happy sunny Easter morning from Marlboro, Massachusetts, ah, wait, Massachusetts, USA. Oh, Bonnie Esther, happy Easter to you too. Um, have, have you been to church? Uh, what are you doing this Easter morning? Hello, everyone. Um, yeah, if you have, uh, just put your name and your uh, where you're from in the comments. And um, if you have any questions about teaching or you just want to share a story, put it in the comments below. Every week now for almost the past year and a half, I always have a live stream on Sundays where I answer questions, give my opinion, and just talk about things. And then we've got Cheryl. Hi, Cheryl. Happy Easter. I was just, actually, guys, uh, Cheryl has a YouTube channel. I was just looking at your channel, and you put out a video about Easter. I'm quickly going to share your YouTube channel. Um, uh, I'll share it now, Cheryl. Let me just quickly say hello to Letty, your number three. Letty, how are you doing? Letty is always giving me great ideas and sharing the content too. I'm so happy. Um, Abhishek, hi. Good evening. Good to see you again. Uh, don't you ever rest, Eric? Okay. Well, actually, Letty, um, yeah, this this was a this was a really busy weekend for me. I actually I just got home an hour ago. Uh, Friday night, I went out with some friends, had a very late night. And then Saturday, I traveled to another city um, to go and meet a friend. And so I met them, had a very late night with them in that city, woke up the next day and met some other friends for, for Indian food that we had for lunch and uh, went for a walk. And then I had to travel by train. The train trip takes almost three hours all the way back home, quickly had a dinner and then came here. And that's why I took a shower. And I've got this shirt on. You'll see it's got a beautiful baby blue, and it's from, from Shao Gao in the Philippines. It's a beautiful island I went to. And I bought this because this is my relaxing shirt, and I just took a shower, so I didn't want to put my hair away, so I did that. Um, so, <laughs> exactly. Uh, Lisa, hi. Good to see you. Um, Cheryl, I'll share your link now. Uh, Salma, hi. How are you doing? I like that. Hello. Uh, and Martin, happy Easter. Happy Easter to everyone out there, guys. If you celebrate or don't, um, I think it's beautiful to share these experiences. I actually, I did a, I did an, a, a video on Easter activities. So I would also like to do uh, an Easter video uh, or uh, a video for maybe another religion too, right? So I was thinking either Ramadan or perhaps something else I can do it for too. Because even though I'm Christian, I know that a, a large majority of my, my viewers aren't Christian, and I would like to make some content for them too. Bonnie Esther says, I will host our church's online service for those who can't attend in person. So I'm leaving this live section uh, session in half an hour. Bonnie Esther, that's so amazing of you. I'm sure you'll do an amazing job. Uh, you've probably done it many times, hosting online. Um, yeah, when it comes to religion and YouTube, you know, um, I think there is freedom for everyone, but I also think it's a great way to connect with people. There's a there's a famous YouTuber he um, called uh, Chris Cannell. He's uh, he has a, a site, but it's it's called uh, what is it called? Video influencers, and he doesn't really he doesn't force religion down your throat, but uh, you can see that the way that he handles himself and the way that he communicates that you know, he's got some experience with that. And I think that's really nice to share that with people. Sandra, hi, everyone. Happy Easter. Happy Easter, Sandra. Anna, good evening, Eric. Hello, everyone. Anna, um, I heard from Vahid that the snow is starting to melt. Is it getting warmer where you are? Today, I, I think this last week was really nice, except today was a bit cold here in Korea. Uh, hope that I'm the first. Um, Salma, I can lie to you and tell you that you're first, but unfortunately you're not. Bonnie Esther beat me to the, my own live stream. <laughs> she she posted the first one um, right before I even started, so she beat us all. Um, and then um, Martin says, hi, Anna. And Cheryl, yes, you posted. By the way, guys, I was just saying, Cheryl has a YouTube channel, and I like to help out. Um, I like to share everyone's content, everyone that 
you know, that I connect with, like Martin and the language lady. So, uh, and so this is her channel if you guys want to check it out. And she also lives here in Korea. We haven't met officially uh, in real life. But uh, I think she does a lot of videos on her life in Korea and also some for teaching. Uh, that's right, Cheryl. Yeah. Um, and then Martin, hope you are enjoying the cherry blossoms in Korea. I really enjoyed it. If you guys saw my my some of my photos that I took, it was beautiful. Uh, today I went for a walk and already, you know, that's how cherry blossoms are. They're with you for a couple of days and the, then they're gone. So I was walk, going for a walk and you could see them all lying all across the street. Uh, Gisela, happy Easter to everyone. Hi, Gisela. How are you doing? Uh, Cheryl, you can pin my name here as a moderator so I'm able to paste my channel. I'll think about it. Um, I'll use moderators in the future. Right now, I think I'm still able to do everything. Thank you, Cheryl. Uh, Letty, people on, on the beach today. Wow, it's that warm. Yeah, I can't wait for the beach. But yeah, um, you all know I love summer. I can't wait to go. Ramadan is about the 13th of April. So get your finger out to do that before it starts. I think I'm not going to make it. Um, I, I'm not going to be able to make a video about it this year. So um, what I think I'll do is I'll do a video for Mother's Day. Um, and then maybe... Oh, what's this? Some blends. Get off. There we go. Um, I'll do one for Mother's Day, which is in May, and then I'll do a few other ones. But the reason I'm uh, so I'll do it for next year or if there's another celebration. Actually, I want to ask you guys something. And wait, here we've got Pow. Hi, Pow. Happy Easter. Q King. Hello, Eric. Happy Easter to everyone. Also, it's my first day going back to school today. You must be exciting. It's uh, excited. It's such a good feeling going back to school. Um, so what I was saying is that I've uh, on Friday, I finally got a new teleprompter and I shot some interesting videos for you. Um, so I shot three videos and I will give you the choice of which one you want to see first because I shot the videos and then I had I went away this weekend. So tomorrow night, I need to edit the video and um, I'll post it on Tuesday night for me. Tuesday night here is maybe in the morning for you guys. So uh, the three videos that I shot, um, I told you guys about the secrets of classroom management. It's it's a very long video and um, I'm, I'm interested to see what you guys think because basically I'm going to share 10 um, pieces of advice that teachers share about about how to control your classroom and then at the end i give like the the golden rule or the magic advice the secret so that's the first video i shot um i'll tell you about the second one now let's just read some of these first so you guys can pick which one i should edit i'll put it out there abigail are you in seoul abigail that's such a nice profile photo um actually i'm not in seoul i live in daegu uh, Daegu is in the center of Korea. And then this last weekend, I went to Busan. Salma, so I'll try next time. Salma, please do. Um, it's always nice to read your name first. Uh, and I say, slow is, the snow is slowly melting here in Ural. Okay, that's good to know. Anna, by the way, I have been... Uh, did I write it? <laughs> Look at this. I have been um, studying my um cyrillic alphabet so i've been studying writing it down so umbrella the sound it makes and writing it down and then i even have a word here uh, it's actually it's ukrainian it's not it's not uh, russian but maybe you can understand it uh well uh, it basically means is it good no i can't read it i still need to study everything but yeah so i wrote down the alphabet and i am studying my cyrillic Hopefully next week, my reading, I will practice it. Uh, my English Classroom, thanks a lot for all the efforts. Thank you, English Classroom. Uh, guys, by the way, um, I know that I'm just rambling on. So if you have any questions about teaching or uh, you would like my opinion or so on something, please uh, put it in the comments below. Uh, Cheryl already asked me a question earlier about uh, she's planning an English. Cheryl, what are you planning again? Give me one second. I wrote it down here. Uh, you're developing an annual program for an English village. Any suggestions? Um, 
suggestions would be appreciated. Okay, I'll give you my opinion on that in a second, Cheryl. And guys, if you've got anything else, just let me know. Martin says he's sub to Cheryl. Excellent. Thank you so much, Martin. Uh, I think it's great to form a community of teachers sharing stuff. And especially in our community where more and more of um, us are putting ourselves out there. I mean, Letty's doing it. Bonnie Esther is a professional. She's so good on live. So I, I, I really appreciate everyone doing their best and sharing. And, you know, we are here to support each other. Um, my English, uh, I'm an English teacher from Morocco. Uh, Salim Alakum, right? Uh, Salimat Alakum, sorry. I, I was actually, today I went to um, uh, an Indian buffet restaurant and I ate really well. And uh, the hostess there was from uh, Morocco. And I said, hi. And she taught me two words. Um, she taught me, uh, well, uh, for uh, all, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, Arabic countries, it's uh, Salim, Salim Alakum. Am I saying it right? I think I'm, there's something wrong. And then she also taught me thank you. What is thank you again? It almost, Cheryl, it, I think it sounds like Cher, like Cheryl or something like that. What is thank you in Moroccan? Okay, uh, thank you, ELT Experiences, Martin. Uh, thanks a lot, brother, for sharing my channel and teaching English for beginners. Okay, English um, Classroom. Um, let me see. Um, I need to find your link and then I can share it. Um, Cheryl says, anyone teaching or have experience teaching any English village in Korea? Could you share, please share your pr programs? Actually, Cheryl, I, I used to know a few friends that worked at English villages and the majority of their curriculum is all about um, creating an authentic experience for their learners. So most of the program has to do with real life communication, right? So it would be they would practice going to a shop, going to the air, uh, going to the airport or, um, you know, uh, calling someone. Uh, um, so I think what you should build it around is real life uh, conversations. And uh, I have I think I still have a booklet that I got when I was teaching at a summer camp. They gave us a program and every day we would do a different lesson. Now, this is maybe something you can do. So we had different situations, uh, role plays. We had vocabulary. And I think most most um, programs will go like this. But with a with an English village, it has to be um, very authentic that you want to go for. And a lot of, um, you know, the student participation, especially practicing their speaking with each other or with you. So it's, it's um, and obviously you can add some grammar to it and some, some useful phrases, of course, but uh, try and structure it around having conversations, right? So you can, you can find some good conversations online that they can practice with each other. And then you can take some words away and you can also let the students create their own conversations uh, for uh, for that. Uh, Martin says, Eric, quick question. What languages have you studied before? What language would you like to learn in the future? Martin, what a fun question. So, um, uh, of course, I can speak, um, well, English, kind of. <laughs> I can't say Massachusetts, so um, uh, kind of. I can also speak Afrikaans, which is uh, which comes from Dutch in, uh, in South Africa. And then um, I used to study some black uh, a black language in South Africa too. It's called Setswana. You had to study it at school. And I also studied it a bit at university, but I can't do a lot with it. You know, I haven't studied it for a long time. And then, of course, I've been in Korea for a long time, and I, I I've I've got survival Korean, which which isn't saying a lot. So. Um, I made it a goal of mine to improve my Korean. Um, I really want to start studying and I'll take some classes soon. That's that's on the agenda to do. And then I, I, I really want to work on my Russian or Ukrainian uh, because um, I really like the way that it sounds, you know, uh, and it's it's it looks very tough and I've listened to it, but I would like to learn some form of Russian and then also Spanish, I think, just because it's so useful. And in the future, if I want to travel, you know, to um, South America, it, it would be very beneficial. So that's that's how it is. Uh, I'm, first, I, I need to. Well, I'm studying a bit of um, uh, Russian or Ukrainian right now in case I travel. And then I want to get my Korean up to a, a, a much better level. And then hopefully a, 
let's say in a couple of years time i'd like to try some spanish Sima, hi everyone hello eric you look great today it's because my hair is covered up that's why and i'm wearing this very comfy shirt from Shao Gao. Shao Gao, I went there on vacation and this is actually my sleeping shirt. So um, it's not very professional, but it made me feel very comfortable because it's it's kind of weird. I've had a very busy weekend, but, uh, and you know, um, you know, a lot of different things happened. But when I woke up this morning, I just had a lot of energy and I was, I was like, I was feeling positive for some reason. I don't know if um, somebody spiked my water, but um, yeah, I felt kind of good. Um, next time, come to Godje. I definitely will, Cheryl. Uh, Godje is so nice. Hi from Ukraine. Nice to see you. Happy Easter. Um, hat cop. Uh, wait. Wait. It's not hat cop. Where's that H? I found it. Okay. The H actually is an N. So it's not. Wait. The T is a T, right? So it's not. And the K is a K, I think. Wait, not. Yeah, the K is a K. The O is a O. The P is an R, isn't it? I think the P is an R. So it's not, not core, not core. I'm guessing. I think I'm missing something here. Where's the T? T, T, T. I think the T is the same. Where are you, T? Yes, the T is the same. Not, not core. Okay, not core. Hi from Ukraine. I'm actually, I might go and visit Ukraine this vac uh, this vacation if things fall out. I call Ivan. Hi, great uh, man. Great job. I follow you from China. Happy Easter. Thank you so much, I call. Um, it's, it's lovely to have you here. Um, Mrs. Abula. Hi, it's so nice to see you. It's been a while. Uh, no, wait, no, it, it feels like it's been a while, but it's so nice to have you. Happy Easter. Have you? Did you do anything special? You always do special things with your students, uh, Mrs. Abuela. Um, Fitri, how to manage speaking test in a large class? Um, yeah, speaking test with a large class. Usually when you do a speaking test, you'd like to be one-on-one -on -one with the students. Uh, how, how, how large is the class? Is it like 10 to 20? Is it closer to 30 students? A speaking test. Um, obviously, as the teacher, you're going to want to to um, test all the students because it's up to you to do that. But the students need to stay busy and active while you test them, because it's it's kind of difficult if if you have to if all you know a big mistake. Okay, this is coming off. There we go. Okay, so it's kind of difficult. Now this is going back on. <laughs> Uh, I see my hair looks strange back there. So it's very difficult if you have to manage the students while doing a presentation or while you have to give them a score for their speaking. And this is a mistake that many teachers do, especially when the students have to do a speech or do a presentation. One student comes to the front and it takes up five minutes for each student. And what do the rest of the students do? Um, sometimes they practice their speeches or you give them some extra work to do. What I would say with a speaking test is, uh, let's say you give each the students uh, in pairs, let's say you give them a conversation, a long conversation that they practice with each other. And then um, while they are practicing with each other, um, the students that are, uh, you can bring in pairs and let them do it with each other because that's gonna cut your time down to a half. So while the others are practicing their speeches, um, you, uh, you bring them to the class and they practice uh, with, they do their speech with you. That way you can test both, both of them. I, I don't know if you've got a set way to test them. That's just an idea I have. If you can rather have them do a conversation together. One of the, um, one of the assessments we do with our students is they have to have a conversation uh, with the partner. So with the partner, they create a conversation and they do that. You can also do it in groups, but that's a little bit more difficult. Alikum uh, uh, asalam. Okay, alikum uh, alikum asalam. Thank you, English classroom. Uh, Kyu King. Um, oh, definitely. It's so good to be able to connect with students face to face again. It is a great feeling. Um, for me, it's been it's been very interesting because at my university, the students have the option to either do Zoom or online, and it's been it's been very interesting where. Some students uh, prefer to come in into class and half of them are online. Obviously, um, you know, it's easier if students are in the class with you. 
That way you can monitor them. But now I've got to divide my attention between the two groups. So what I do is um, I do my presentation and I teach using um, the screen and the present, uh, uh, the, you know, the, um, Anyway, I use the computer and Zoom and I project it onto a screen so that the students in the class can work. And then I put them into their groups. I give them their, their assignments and then I do it on Zoom and then I walk around. So it's been very interesting um, having two types of students at the same time. Uh, Chokran. Uh, Chokran. Hi. Uh, what does Chokran mean? Chokran. Uh, Aziza. Hi. Abigail. Oh, you're like four to five hours away from me. I'm here in Donghe, Gangwondo, looking forward on meeting you someday. It sounds like we're so many here from Korea. So definitely we should we should organize a get together. Thank you so much for your video videos. Much appreciated. Okay, guys, by the way, so I told you I made three videos. The first video is called The Secret to Classroom, uh, The Secret to Classroom Management. Now it's a bit of a um uh it's a clickbait title and it's going to have an interesting thumbnail but i think it'll have some good tips to it uh, i don't think all the teachers will agree with what i have to say but it will be a very long video and i'll try and share some good tips and then the second video that you can if you want to see that one first is um um, one of the questions I had was how to motivate students. And in this one, I share 20 ways that teachers can motivate students. Once again, a long video, maybe 10 minutes or so. And then the third video I made, um, this one is a bit shorter. And it's called classroom, Emerg classroom Management Emergency. And this is for teachers that are just dying in the classroom. They're in a class that they can control and they feel like they just want to quit teaching be because of it. So uh, those are the three options you have. I will post it in the community. Which one should I edit tomorrow after work? I will go to the study room cafe and maybe for four or five hours, I'll just edit. And you can tell me which video you want to see. Um, secret to classroom management, uh, uh, um, motivating students or classroom emergency. I'm, I'm thinking I really want to do the the uh, secret to classroom management, but it's such a long video, maybe 15 to 20 minutes. Okay, uh, my English classroom, thank you. Bonnie Esther, all of our Indian buffets in my area are only doing takeout. Wow, I miss the buffets. Yeah, this buffet is in another city. If, um, in my area, there are zero Indian restaurants. Imagine how sad I am, and uh, I need to work on my cooking so I can make proper Indian food, but yeah, no, it's it's it was so nice today. Mrs. Abiela, oh, by the way, how late am I? 10 minutes behind, okay. Uh, Mrs. Abiela, um, hi, Eric, happy Easter. We are locked down here again, really? Um, okay, yeah, I, I heard, like, actually, in the city I was in, in Busan, they were also doing lockdown again. Well, uh, Mrs. Abiela, I hope it's going well. Stay, stay safe. I hope you can do your classes as well. And I says, Eric, it's so touching, especially knowing that you're always so busy and you spend time for learning. So really, you're doing a great job. Keep it up. Thank you, Anna. Um, yeah, well, um, you know, what else am I going to do with my time? I feel like, um, actually, I feel like I'm missing, I'm wasting a lot of time and I need to be doing more. You know, um, we always feel like we're not supposed to be where we're at uh, or we want, we wish we were further ahead. So for myself, you know, I I like setting goals for myself. Uh, I like having something to work towards. Um, you know, if I lie on my bed and I'm not doing something, I have to feel guilty. I need to have something to motivate me. And um, um, even though I try and meet all these deadlines, I'm usually a bit late. So, for example, with my plans for the channel and the content, uh, I feel like I'm actually maybe two months behind where I wanted to be. And hopefully by summer, I can finish everything I need to finish so that I can go on vacation and relax for a little bit. Uh, Saima, what are some pre-reading activities to use in class? And happy Easter Sunday. Um, Saima, I can I can think of some. Um, I can think of some activities, but my brain is only so full. So I'm going to send you my reading activity, uh, reading activities. 
video. This is one of my older videos, uh, not older videos, but I think at this point, this is almost one year ago, maybe a little bit longer. But this is the first, I'm really proud of this video because I worked hard to find all the activities and um, I think I shot it well and I edited it. I was kind of happy with this video. It's kind of long, but it's got a lot. I'm going to post this for you in the comments. Um, it's got a lot of pre-reading activities and that I'm not going to explain them, but they're in the video. I'm sorry. I, like, even if I try and think of them now, it's just going to pass me by. So watch the video a little bit later. I'm sorry I can't think of them right now, but the video will be able to help you. Uh, Martin, situational English for English villages. Yeah. Uh, if so, then focus on developing vocabulary, then phrases for those situations. Yeah, I think that the reason that students go to these English villages is for them to practice, to become as confident as possible uh, um, when they're teaching, right? So they want to gain confidence, um, especially with uh, common conversations and things that they can say. Um, what I, you know, when I'm teaching and I can think of some good um, practical advice for my students and I, I stop the class and I'm, oh guys, by the way, um, this is something interesting, right? So let me tell you, for example, maths. So uh, in England or Britain, we would say maths, but in America, they say math. And I would tell the students that, or I would say, well, guys, uh, in general, most students struggle with this. So if you are able to fix this mistake or do it this way, then you are far superior to other students. And once you say things like that to your students where they know, oh, you know what? If it's a way that you're teaching this information where they feel like it's valuable to them and they can use it in practical situations, they are far more likely to learn it. And I think what you want to do with these um, English villages where you use a lot of situational um, uh, language and vocabulary phrases for those situations, then the students, it has to be practical for them so that they can gain confidence and use it at any point. So that's something that you want to look at when you do that. Okay, phone shop. Hi, good to listen to you. Okay, this is going off now. It's getting too too hot. Hi, phone shop. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, it's uh, it's so nice that you guys visit me. Um, I, was, I, I, I just got off the train maybe two hours ago, two or three hours, and I ran into a colleague, very nice man, and he said, Eric, what are you doing tonight? Um, I said, well, well, I asked him, what are you doing tonight, uh, John? And he said, oh, I'm, I've got class tomorrow early. I'm just going to prepare. How about you? And I said, actually, I'm doing my live stream. And it's almost been 18 months that I've done this live stream. And he says, wow, you know, that's, that's really cool. And I think, yeah, uh, well, I appreciate it because it gives me a chance to reflect on my life and see, okay, what have I been doing every week for the last two years, you know? And I know that I talk, I try and share some ideas about teaching and chat to you guys, but I also spend a lot of this time just talking about my life. And I'm so grateful to you guys for, for listening. Uh, Cheryl says, it's more experimental, uh, not so academic. Okay, right, right. More ex uh, experiential, so about experience, right. So I'm trying to figure that out, out the time frame. I'm sure you can balance it out. Um, you know, just have a certain moments for your lessons or how you want to teach it, you know, so you can start with a fun game, you can do some vocabulary with them to prepare them, you can give them role plays that they can use, uh, you can you can practice the situations, you can play a game at the end, you know, whatever you do, just uh, figure it out. And um, I, I guess with the, what they want with these villages is they want something tangible, something they can touch. So if you do have worksheets with the vocabulary, the role plays, the ideas, and also some places where the students can perhaps write their own conversations to use, or um, maybe they can, you can give them some projects that they have to do or activities for each page or each situation, right? So you can do stuff like that. What you can also do is if you need extra material, and I think this is true for everything, but if you need extra material, uh, find some worksheets there. There's a fantastic website that we use for worksheets called called um, ISL Collective. What is it? ISL Collective. Yeah, it's ISL Collective. And they've got worksheets for every every um, type of um, 
content that you're going to do. So just go in there. Let's say you're practicing going to the post office. You just go to ISL Collective. You look for some worksheets and that you can use in combination. So the students have these activities. They've got the role play. And then, you know, if, if they still have time left, you've got this worksheet that they can use and they can also show it to their parents. Remember, guys, one of the important things is that as teachers, we are not only responsible um, for our students to prove that they are mastering the content, but it's also about proving to the parents uh, the impact that we're having on our students. So we've always got to gather evidence of what we're doing in class so that we can show it to parents at any time. I think that's one of the most important things is having it, it sounds bad. It sounds that like it's negative, like you're on the defensive, that you should prove that you're doing things in class. But it's way better having those documents and having examples of what the students are doing. Um, Martin says, Abigail, Claire, good dana. I love Donga. It's a beautiful place to visit, especially for seafood. Right. Um, Martin might be coming back to Korea, if that's it. Um, guys, am I late? Yes, I'm 20 minutes late. Sorry, I'm going to go faster now. Um, Martin says, I'm currently studying Japanese, Korean, French, also on Duolingo. It seems so convenient, and the app has improved since I started studying on Duolingo. Yeah, I tried Ukrainian, and then you always get those messages every day to do it. And I'm like, no, that's not how I want to study. Uh, Muzahem, hi from Brazil. Happy Easter, everyone. Hi. Uh, Abigail, uh, yes, you should try their gum jar, John, and makali too. Makali is a rice wine. Very good. Xiao Gao, right. This is um, the island that I went to before I came back to Korea. Q King, I saw that you did a photo shoot on Instagram. That was something special from you this week. Thank you for watching, Q King. Yeah, um, on Monday, I went out with Tuesday. Tuesday, I went out with a friend. He's a great photographer, show hug, and he shot some for me, especially on a rainy day, right? So they have pajon, and uh, in Korea, they, they eat pajon, which is like a pancake with some vegetables in it, and um, rice wine, they like to drink that. Um, happy Easter, Tamina. Nice, thank you. A blessed Easter. Saima, one of my activities is a role play. When it comes to conversations, some sort of dialogues, yeah. Um, very common in my classes too, or the students create their own. You know, um, yeah, I love doing role plays in my classes. Abigail, uh, um, yes, Korean style, Gamja John and Makali on rainy days. Wan John Toki Jo. Taki Jo. Taki Jo, is that like biting? You like biting? Wan John is really, and then Taki Jo is like, is that like takta? Is that like biting? I'm not sure. Uh, my Korean's not that good. Um, Takang, hi, I'm planning to come out with a method of testing students on listening, speaking, reading, and writing skills. I will start with uh, grade seven students to see how they are improving till grade 12. What do you think about this? Well, that's a, that's a major thing to, to test, Takang. Um, I, I think try and connect with um, some of the teachers that these students have had. So um, perhaps talk with uh, the teachers in grade seven, eight, nine, ten. 10, ask them for some feedback on how they think it might be the best to do it. Um, I, I don't think I can give you exact ideas on, I can give you ideas, but I think the best way to do it is to actually go to their teachers and find out what they think should be done. You know, so they'll have a much clearer idea of what they're looking for and how these students are supposed to have improved. Okay, I'm only 10 minutes behind. So I always check when the messages come and uh, I'll go through them. Yajaira, hello, good morning. So nice to see you. I always feel like you come maybe in the middle of the street, uh, no, maybe 15 or 20 minutes in. Natalia, hi from Ukraine. You did well, keep going. Thank you, Natalia. Natalia is not a teacher, but she's an English learner and you are so welcome, Natalia. Thank you so much for being here again. Mrs. Abiola, yes, I did a nice activity. Where are the eggs or where is the eggs? I will send photos for you. Please do. I'd love to see those. Um, Yachaira, happy Easter, Professor. Oh, what a cute bunny. That's so cool. Asal, hi, Eric. How are you? I am really well. Thank you, Asal. Um, I'm looking forward to this week because I'm going to be busy. Um, next weekend, I do have some plans, but during the week, 
Um, I'll have my classes. I've got some editing that I have to complete for those three videos. Uh, I think that's going to have me busy because it takes it takes a long time to actually edit because these videos, a video took me the the one video took me 40 minutes to film and I'll break that down in maybe 15 minutes or to 20 minutes. So that's going to take a long time to edit. And then some of these other other videos will also take a so I need a number of days just to edit, and that's what I will do. Um, and then Martin says here, Abigail, Claire, good one. Uh Marco Lido Sasayo. So he says here in Korean, yesterday he bought makali, some rice wine. Wow, did you find it somewhere in England, uh, Martin? Um, I like a good makali. So um in Korea, hiking is really popular. And what they do is when you go hiking and you come down, you drink some rice wine. It's very tasty. Near my place, there's a really good makli place too. Uh, that's me. Yeah, Jaira, uh, thanks for your time. It's really super wonderful for my job in primary. Well, Jaira, um, well, I, I, I hope I can help. I hope I've got some, some good things I can share, but you're always welcome. And uh, I hope to share some more ideas in the future. So once I finish these three videos, I want to write some more scripts. Um, I think one of the scripts I want to do is I want to show how to some ideas for teaching younger learners. I want to do a video on uh, how to teach younger learners and phonics and more online videos too. So I want to do things with that. And uh, uh, Eric, I wish you good luck with all your plans. Thank you, Anna. And I hope I wish beautiful things for you and your family too. Meg, quick, quick, quick question because I need some help. How do you get the attention and focus of a class that doesn't want to speak English and they constantly speak Chinese? Well, um, you're going to have to put your foot down. You're going to, um, when the students come into class, you got to be lecturing them. Hello, everyone. Welcome to class. Remember, in this class, you can speak Chinese outside of class. In this class, this is for practicing English. And it's, uh, and it's not useful for you. It's very bad if you don't practice your English in class. I don't want you to be shy. I want you to practice your English because outside you can talk with your family, with your dog, with your friends. You can speak Chinese. But here I want you to do English. So you've got to constantly give them that um, speech. You can even have some kind of signal where you say oh, less uh, English only or a sign. Maybe write a sign on the board. Right. So write English on the board somewhere. And then you tell the students that um, if if you if you make 10 marks or something, um, then something bad will happen. So if students, are, so, the, okay, this is actually an idea. Write English on the board. And then when the student, when you do like some activities with the students and you hear a lot of uh, in, uh, Chinese, you're like, ah, oh, that group, that boy or girl, uh, in this class, we practice our English. You can use a little bit of Chinese to help you, but I want you to practice your English. And then, cross out um, underneath the E of English, cross out, like uh, make, a, make an X so that the students see that, well, there's some kind of consequence for them using too much Chinese. They carry on. Someone says it again. You remind them, listen, Jimmy, I want you to practice your English, English class. And then you go to the N and you cross out the N or something like that. So that way it, you're basically training your students to use more English in class. Um, and um, get the students on board. Of course, you don't, you know, uh, I don't agree with English teachers, um, you know, saying only English, getting angry about it, right? I think there is, it's very useful sometimes for me to use some basic Korean, some instructions. So if the students don't understand, like, uh, for example, if I want a student to repeat after me and his, his uh, English level is very low, you know, I can try and say, repeat after me, repeat after me. And, you know, it gets frustrating. Or I can just say, tarahe in Korean, it means um, repeat after me. Tarahe, and then he's like, oh, okay, understand. And then he repeats after me. So for weak students, uh, those, those native instructions are very useful or just fun. I like to ask my students, oh, guys, uh, what's personality in Korean again? Um, what is personality? Even if I know it, I'm like, oh, can you guys help me? And then they help me and I'm like, oh, that's it. Let me write it down. Thanks for helping me. And then by them helping me, they are also helping all the other students in class that might not have known what personality is. But now they hear the Korean, they're like, 
Oh, okay, personality. So um, I'm, I'm not that draconian with only using English, but in classes like yours, where the students are only, uh, where they get used to speaking Chinese, in Korean, uh, in Korean classes, it can happen very quickly because of that Confucianist uh, culture where they're so comfortable, well, not Confucianist, but it, it happens in every language class where they become so comfortable using their native language and they don't want to seem dumb speaking English or they're very shy, then it's very easy for them to fall into it. So every day I give that I give them that sermon. Listen, guys, today let's practice our English. Um, and at the end of class, I praise them. I'm like, guys, uh, you practiced a lot of English. I'm very proud of you. You learned some new words. You you improved your English. I can feel it. Uh, thank you for not speaking too much Korean. So as a teacher, you're also you're also a mom. You're also a judge. You're also a, a motivator. So you've got to start using this more in class. And I found with with a lot of teachers that do have classroom management issues, it's because they're not comfortable yet. Um, playing all these different roles where they're not used to like um, mothering their kids. They're like, um, so you've got to form those connections with them where you expect them to speak more English in a nice way. And also, you know, you can use some tips and tricks for that too. You can even have a chant where they have to say English in this class or something like that. Okay. Uh, Elizabeth, hi, how are you doing? Hi, Eric. What is on your profile there? Uh, it's you. And is it Jesus with you? Oh, that's a very nice profile. Um, uh, how far about behind am I? Um, I'm 10 minutes behind. Okay. Ling Chang. Hi, Eric. I have a small class and would like to implement differentiated instruction method. I've read some articles on how to implement it. What tips or ideas do you have? Uh, well, differentiation means that, you know, you're going to give... Um, the, the students with different needs are going to be able to differentiate the, the instruction. Uh, I think that's what it is. Give me a second. Let me just double check. Uh, differentiation in education. Uh, yes, uh, tailing instruction to meet individual needs, whether teachers different context, process, and products, or the learning environment. Okay, yeah. So here's my answer. With differentiation, uh, you want them to have multiple ways to understand um, to understand what they're doing. So, um, you know, when you're teaching something, you're going to want to do it in multiple ways for them. Let's say you're teaching them new vocabulary about public transportation. Uh, what you can do is you can show them a picture. You can ask them, oh, where are they? What are they? You can write it. So you can you can write it down and then you can say it out loud for them. They can repeat after you. Uh, you can then uh, give them some example sentences where it's used. Uh, you can let the students write it down and then you can have different levels of it too. Right. So you can write down some basic expressions that the students know bus street and then you can go into some more, you know, um, uh, some uh, some more difficult vocabulary or expressions, right? So in that way, you're giving the students many different ways to connect their um, their pre-existing knowledge to what they're learning now, the new material that they're learning. Uh, so first, you're going to do that with your with your uh, presentation, right? The what is it? It's the uh, the content that you're teaching them. The process you want them to practice it in different ways. That means that you're going to get them to use it in conversation. You're going to play some games with them. You're going to let them write it down. Um, you know, you can show them a video where they repeat it after the people. You can um, have some activities where the words are out. Anyway, so you're differentiating it and you're allowing the students different ways to do it. So if you want to differentiate uh, reading, for example, you can have a simpler way with uh, easier vocabulary and then, you know, a second paragraph where, or a second story where it's a bit more difficult for other students. And then um, what's very difficult what is, uh, so the products that the students have to make is you want the students to be able to show that they're able to use it. So you can give them the option of what they want to do. They can make a poster of um, uh, transportation, right? And then they have to explain on the poster, they can point, okay, this is a street, this is him walking over. You can let them do a role play with a friend, right? So you are, differentiation is just finding different 
connection ways for the students to connect and show um, that they've mastered the whatever they're learning. And um, you can also then with the product, you by giving the students a choice, they also feel like they can take ownership of everything that they're learning. So um, yeah, that's that's a really good question. And um, yeah, I I hope that helps. Um, I think differentiation, you know. Um, it's it's a fancy word, but most teachers do it anyway, just to make sure that the students understand, you know. And um, you're also going to learn, your, um, uh, understand your students better too. Uh, I think there is um, a lot of teachers once they want to start something new, they overcomplicate things, right? So watch out for not overcomplicating things. Find out what kind of works for your students, and then do more of that. So in my class, if something works with a certain group of students and I see them really enjoy doing it that way, I'm not going to offer them all these different ways of doing it. I'm not going to try and be too fancy. I'm going to just say, okay, let's do it this way. Okay, and uh, focus on that. Okay, I hope you understand. Do you guys agree with me, by the way? I'm just um, spitballing it here, so I hope it works. Asal, you are a very energetic teacher. Where do you get so much energy? Well, um, I've said it before, you know, when I'm when I'm out and about and I'm meeting my friends, maybe I'm a bit more relaxed. I might be a different person, but um, as soon as I'm talking to you guys, I uh, it gets me excited knowing that you guys are there. I'm getting these questions and it so I'm drawing energy from from the people I'm talking to. And in my classes, I also try and be a bit more engaging with the students not this much now i'm speaking very fast because i want to cover a lot of information and i want to talk as many to as many of you as possible but in general um i i don't speak this fast okay guys i'm very late i'm going through mrs abiela no saturday was my last class i'm so sorry to hear uh chc hello from ecuador can you please say again the website to get the worksheet you mentioned before um yeah good question it's called isl collective fantastic place to go you just log in and you can download as many uh, worksheets uh, for free a great site to go to i can highly recommend it um there's another site i use too um boggles esl world also has so you can check that out uh martin uh it's isl collective google it nice um a uh, clean Xerox. Hi, I hope you're doing well. I'm not a teacher, but I wanted some advice from you. How can I improve my English from stepping out from a B level to a C at least? Well, this is this is um, the dangerous plateau that you have. Uh, what I would su suggest, clean Xerox, is um, start working on your vocabulary. Right. Um, so if you uh, if you are used to saying the same thing over and over again, try and find some synonyms that you can use or some different phrases. If you watch a movie and you see like a, a good expression, write it down if, if it sounds really nice. Or um, if you read a book, you know, and you read a new word, write it down and then do your best to bring it up in conversation uh, if possible. So learn these new words, try and bring it up in conversation and also, you know, try and mimic some of the conversations that you find of uh, from good actors and people that you can learn from and then the best way to learn is by doing so um practice with friends practice with as many native speakers as you can and then try and implement these new words and i think um it is difficult to go from that you know that plateau of like what is that plateau you know when you're learning something and then you feel like you're not improving. And I think that's the next step to get into C1. Okay, Martin, you said, um, I went to High Mart in H Mart in London, a Korean supermarket, and bought it there. But it's expensive. Yeah, I, I bet it is when you, excuse me, when you import. Okay, sorry, guys, I'm going through it now. Oh, I'm catching up. Okay, 10 minutes. Meg Grot, um, I would recommend winning the hearts of the students first. Try to insert some humor. They will want to help you by studying, definitely. It's actually, I think it's one of the tips that I give uh, in my motivational video that I'll probably, I think I really want to, maybe I'll do it this Tuesday or next Tuesday. I will release, we'll see which one I do first tomorrow. Oksana, hi, welcome. Uh, Yedai, hi. Yedai, where are you from? Um, uh, I'm, I've got a guess, but I don't want to guess out loud. Um, 
I also have heard of teachers having a buzzer in front of class. Students walk up to it, press it, and then they're allowed to speak the L1. It's very embarrassing. Yeah, I, I, I you know, I think it can be fun. It's, it's a novel idea. Um, having some kind of things, I, I just, I'm, I'm very cautious not to embarrass my students. I want them to feel when they're coming to class, you know, I'm not judging them, but I do want them to improve. So I am putting that a little bit of pressure on them to use as much English as possible, but I'm also going to praise them when they do that, you know, and then when they're using their Korean, I do want to embarrass them a little bit. So I'm like, no, 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 no. You can use a little bit, but if it's too much, I get upset, you know, so it also depends how you handle that. But uh, I, it, it has to come from a positive place, definitely. So if it's fun, that's good. Abigail, uh, taki jo is an expression when you, when you make, when you think that two things are good together, a perfect match, like gum, jajon, and makil. Abigail, thank you so much for teaching me. I didn't, I didn't know that. Taki jo. I didn't know that. Taki jo. Okay, thank you for teaching me. Ah, such a good tip. Good tip. Giving warnings without telling off. I like that. Very nice. In XX. <laughs> Definitely. That's how I would do it. Uh, Meg, I started adding a line to indicate one minute for each time that they speak English. They have to stay one minute late. After class, there were five lines. Uh, yeah, Martin, it, it depends on your situation, uh, how you can punish them. Uh, it, it is difficult. Um, like sometimes if you have a schedule and you know that, you know, it, it might, you know, if, if the students rebel against that rule, then it can be bad. Or if you have other students waiting, but definitely if you can have some way of enforcing that rule will help. Mario. Hello. Hola, Eric teacher. I missed me. Uh, missed me. Um, Mario, I always miss you. And that's such an interesting rabbit. Mario, how, how have you been? Happy Easter to you. So good to see you. Uh, make students left late for lunch and we're back at the queue after they they changed okay so obviously the rule worked and the students stopped doing that okay that's a great phrase i agree miss still children get bored very quickly even if i organize games and interesting worksheets what can i do please answer um, make it about the students um, let them do activities and project-based learning together put them into groups and then you can spend more time where the students present it to the class. So, you know, if the students do role plays with each other or um, conversations, then once they're done, pick random groups to do it. Don't let all of them do it because then they become bored and wait for each other. But if you pick random students to do it in front of class, it's fun for them to show off what they've been learning. So um, I think uh, with the games and things, try and do let the students do a lot more on their own you know, and you can do that in groups or uh, when they do things like that and then show off to the class. I, I think it's some quick uh, advice I would give. Serene Sai, how do you manage speaking class for one hour for grade one and two? Once again, you want to get the students to do most of the work, most of the speaking. So uh, if you can um, play some games or let them uh, create things together, uh, really fun. Uh, once again, I'm bringing up role plays but it's so useful for the students. But before you start the role plays, um, make sure that you help them and you prepare them for that. So what is that word? I always forget about it. Um, you have to, you have to support them. Um, there's a word I always forget that word. I'm going to remember it later, but uh, you want to um, prepare them to do the role play. So first do some chants with the young students, then, play some fun, fun games where they have to uh, win and try and use the words. And then you can let them uh, create a, a story or uh, something that they, the, the main thing is they should be creating something and then that will take more time for you to relax, to walk around and help individual students or groups. So that's very important, I think. Um, and then Abigail, Eric, uh, uh, it is. Uh, I just followed you and Eric on Instagram. Abigail, it's so nice. I'll see it now. Um, how to manage class? Yosef, I've got a video right for you. I'm going to work on it. It's almost 20 minutes long. It will come out on Tuesday. And it's all about classroom management. And my mom says, excellent advice, son. Uh, Mom, you made a spelling mistake there. It's advise with a C and advice is uh, advise is the verb. 
but I love you so much, so I won't bring it up again. Um, Kezia, you made it, Kezia. Hi, Eric. Wow, I saw Kezia uh, on Instagram too. She has been working so hard and taking such nice photos. Um, Mario, I haven't seen your videos again, new teacher. No, I've been posting videos, Mario, but um, maybe on these next two Tuesdays, I will bring out um, really, uh, I, I will bring out some um, really good videos. Oh, I, I think they're going to be good. I haven't, I haven't seen what they look like. I have to still edit them, but uh, I think they'll be good. Um, Asal, Eric, I wish you good luck. Thank you so much, Asal. Okay, guys, I'm catching up. We've got five minutes left. So if you have a last question or something to share, put it in there and I'll quickly read it. Um, my mom's, uh, I need to call my mom later and apologize for, for um, <laughs> correcting her on air. She's going to be so upset with me. Sorry, mom. Uh, Ali, excellent. Okay. Scaff, Anna, yes, that's what I was looking for. I think I need to write, uh, I've got some, uh, some post-its here. I need to write scaffold, Eric, remember the word and paste it. So, because I think it's like in three live streams, I've been like, what is that word scaffolding? We have to scaffold and, and prepare our students. Thank you, Anna. Uh, Mario <laughs> has got that. Lisa, uh, you have to get the ball rolling in a way. You, uh, you do need to get started somehow uh, with our classes. Um, yeah, guys. So I think I made it to the end of all the comments. Yeah. Um, what did you guys think about today's live stream? It's like all the live streams. It's just me um, talking about a lot of random things. And thank you so much, everyone, for joining. Um, what did I want to do? Okay, so tomorrow uh, I, I'll send out um, I'll send a, out a community post, and you can pick: Do you want classroom management or do you want motivation? Because I shot those two videos, and I need to edit them tomorrow night. So maybe in uh, I'll have to start doing it in 16 hours um, after work, and then I'll have that ready. Gregory, hi. Uh, good luck for the week ahead, Eric. I have a question. How do you handle a new student who becomes overwhelmed with emotion on the first day? Oh, yeah, that's a good question, uh, Gregory. Okay, so we've had it, you know, a shy student coming into class. They see all these new faces in there. Um, you know, um, first of all, uh, uh, focus on what you can control. So the first thing you want to do is prepare your students for the new student. So um, when the, before the if if it's possible before the new student comes in, you're going to prepare your class. You're going to say, um, "Hi everyone, new student is coming to class. I want you to treat them very nice and don't overwhelm them. Um, uh, find one of the nice students to pair them with to teach them about things." And then when they come into class, uh, smile, let them come in and just say, guys, this is um, her. Uh, uh, oh, and um, perhaps if it's possible, before you bring the student into class, have a quick conversation with them. Just reassure them, say, OK, I'm, uh, tell me a little bit. What's your name? OK, I'm going to introduce you to class. Don't worry. It's a very friendly class. So you want to soften the blow before they get into class. Um, and then also give them time. You know, you don't want to overwhelm them. So um, uh, don't let them do too much, but give them a partner to work with and uh, just tell them it's OK. You know, smile, uh, tell them they can sit down, relax. You know, you don't want to put too much pressure on them. Irena, scaffolding is breaking up the learning into chunks and providing a tool or structure with each chunk. When scaffolding reading, for example, you might preview the text and discuss key vocabulary or chunk the text and read and discuss it as you go. Thank you, Irena. That's exactly what um. Well, what I was trying to explain with, uh, you know, before you do any type of activity with our students is you want to mentally prepare them for it. So what I like to do is you can tell the students a funny story. You can ask them for some of their experiences. You can show them pictures, but you want to slowly immerse them into what you're going to teach them uh, so that once th they don't even know the lesson has started and they're already learning. Right. So it's not like, OK, today we're going to study this. This is the vocabulary. It's like, OK, well, you you kind of hint towards what it's going to happen. Um, I wasn't told about the new student, so it was a train wreck in a way. So suddenly the student arrives and you're like, well, new student. Oh, OK, well, OK. So, yeah, in that case, I think just um, remember what you're in control. And if the student is there, is like uh, just tell the class, OK, class, quickly take out your things. I want you to read that unit. 
you take the student out and you just say hello to them one on one first and kind of reassure them. I, I don't know what the situation is, but I, I think the more experience we get, the easier it will become to to um, uh, get used to those social situations. Actually, one of the the things that I focused on in this new video that I'm making on classroom management is how with teaching, you know, um, we need this experience because uh, we've got all these different situations that we need to control as the leaders in the class. And um, and I think handling these types of situations, you know, it's it's very important. OK, Gregory says, thank you so much, Eric. Anytime, Gregory, uh, thank you for coming. Um, OK, everyone, I think that's it. Thank you so much for another Sunday. It was lovely having you all. Um, Remember to vote which video do you want to see. I'll start editing it tomorrow and hopefully have it ready on Tuesday, like always. Uh, everyone, have a fantastic week. Thank you so much for joining. I can see Anna is here. She's saying goodbye. Anna, have a lovely week. Uh, Mario too. Mario, thank you for always commenting. I really appreciate it. Everyone, I'm Eric from Edicute. And, oh, Bonnie Esther, you're back. Good luck with uh, your meeting uh, for your church, okay? Have a good one. Thank you, Reina. Um, uh, Leng, bye-bye.